Roughly five years ago, Lexus was looking to fill a gaping hole in its SUV lineup with the introduction of the 2018 Lexus RXL. Now, it's, as its name implies, the RXL was essentially a stretch job of the fourth generation RX, designed to give it a small third row and slightly more cargo space. Now, the RXL was pretty laughable because that third row literally didn't even have enough room for small children, and it didn't have that much more cargo space versus the standard length version. So for 2024, Lexus is looking to apologize to dealers and customers with the introduction of this model. This is the first ever 2024 Lexus TX. And just like the Toyota Grand Highlander in which it's based, this has an adult friendly third row and enough cargo space for up to seven people and seven carry on suitcases. So as you can see this week, we're actually out here in Austin, Texas for the first drive event of the new TX and the big question I went answered. For those of you who are looking for a luxury three row SUV that can actually fit full size adults, how does the brand new 2024 TX stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Hey guys, before we get started with the video, I'm gonna give a brief shout out to the sponsor of this review, Keeps. Now what exactly is Keeps? Well, they're an online subscription service that offers treatment plans approved by licensed medical providers. Because they are online, they offer 24 seven support and proven results. Now I would personally know this because I've been using Keeps for a few years now. And let me tell you, it's one of the best products out there that allows you to keep the hair that you still have left on your head. The other great thing about Keeps is I have a super busy lifestyle and this product is really easy for me to fit into my daily routine. Every morning I take this one small pill and then twice a day, once in the morning, once at night, I use this mousse in my hair. And as I said earlier, it's just really easy to fit into my daily life. So what are you waiting for guys? Hair loss stops now with Keeps and to get a special offer, be sure to go to keeps.com forward slash redline. That's K-E-E-P-S.com forward slash redline. And now let's get back to the video. Now, before we start talking about the exterior styling of the new 2024 Lexus TX, let me go ahead and pop the hood and show you guys what's powering this thing. Now, Lexus will offer the TX in three different powertrains. Today, however, in this video, I'm just gonna show you one, which is the base hybrid option, the 500H. Now underneath this hood, you're gonna find essentially the same powertrain that's in the Toyota Grand Highlander Hybrid Max, which means you combine a 2.4 liter turbocharged gasoline direct injection four cylinder with two electric motors. So there's an electric motor in the front and then a separate E axle at the back. For those of you who don't want a hybrid powertrain, there's also the TX350, which I'll drive at a later date. Uh, Lexus says they'll have one back in my local area while I'll be able to test for a full week. There's also the TX550H Plus, which is a plug-in hybrid V6. I'll do a separate video on that. Be sure to click in the link in the description below to see a full review on that vehicle. This model here is designed to kind of be the sweet spot. So which means uh, with that four cylinder turbo and the two electric motors and a very small nickel, nickel metal hydride battery pack, you're looking at a combined 366 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. Now that power output is about four more horsepower versus what you find in the Grand Highlander Hybrid Max. It all goes out through a six speed automatic transmission. Uh, and Lexus uh, claims the fuel economy of this model is 27 in the city, uh, 28 on the highway, about 27 combined. So it's actually one MPG better versus the Grand Highlander. This vehicle has around a 17.1 gallon fuel tank. You'll be looking at around 400 miles of range on a full tank. Uh, you also should be able to do around 400 miles on a full tank in general, which is a pretty good amount of range considering the size of this vehicle. Lexus claims zero to 60 should be 6.1 seconds. It has a top speed of around 112 miles an hour. And this vehicle will tow a maximum of 5,000 pounds. Uh, and as it sits, it weighs in at around uh, 4,900 pounds. So if you want a lighter TX, you're gonna go for the non-hybrid 350, which offers up to 275 horsepower, which is 10 more versus what you get in the Grand Highlander. But let's go ahead and close up the hood and talk about the exterior styling. Now this is the color that the TX basically debuted on about three months ago in Texas. Uh, it's called Incognito, which is kind of similar to the cement gray exterior color that Toyota offers. This car definitely shows a lot of firsts for styling with Lexus. As you guys know, it's built on the TNGAK architecture, something that it shares with the Highlander and the Grand Highlander. You can see the front fascia, all TXs will come standard with this full LED headlight design with the LED LED daytime running light, LED low and high beams. 
LED fog lights. This TX500H comes standard with the F-Sport design package, which means you have a slightly different front fascia. You can see there's some silver accents, the Lexus logo over here. You can see this model has a new grill that Lexus is calling Unified Spindle. You can see on this incognito, you can see the inside portions of the inner slats are black. Uh, this right here is an interesting little slot that allows air to cool the engine. There's also the radar sensor over here. Overall, let me know what you think of the styling. In person, it certainly looks very interesting, but I also get more Toyota Grand Highlander vibes from the front versus uh, the actual Grand Highlander, which is kind of interesting to see. I particularly like this incognito color. Lexus is offering a choice of six different colors for now. There's also a red exterior color. However, that will be a late availability. Lexus claims they're gonna ramp up the color production as we go further into the model year for this uh, generation TX. But for now at launch, you can only get it in six colors. This color here is exclusive to the F Sport model. Now moving around the side profile, you can really see the size of the TX. This is a big vehicle. It's the biggest SUV that Lexus has ever created at 203.5 inches long. This is around two inches, two and a half inches longer than the Grand Highlander. It rides on a 116.1 inch wheelbase compared to the RX. The RX is about 11 inches shorter and four inches shorter in the wheelbase. Uh, this model here is also about 78 and a half inches wide and about 70 inches tall. So it's a nice boxy pro 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 profile to give you that interior space. Now the F-Sport model comes with these specific F-Sport wheels. You can see they are kind of like a dark gray and black finish to them with the multiple spokes. You also have an upgraded brake, a 15.9 inch front rotor clamped down by a black painted six piston caliper, which is a Huge upgrade versus the 13 inch rotor you get on the standard TX. You also get the adaptive variable suspension, these body colored wheel arches, and you also have dynamic rear wheel steering that's included when you go for the F Sport model only. It's only available on this 500H. Those are features that you can't even get on the Grand Highlander. So that's one of the reasons why you'd want to go for the Lexus where it gives you that F Sport handling uh, package. The black painted side mirrors here with power folding integrated turn signals. You can see all the chrome has been blacked out. There's also a blacked out low profile roof rails. And then you can see a panoramic glass roof is included. This model here is the F Sport Luxury, the base version of the F Sport Premium. This is the first time that Lexus is kind of introducing new uh, packages on the F Sport handling model where you have a premium and a luxury package. Now moving around the rear, you can see this is where the car has more of a Lexus profile. I especially love the signature Lexus light blade, which means it's a full LED taillight design where it spells out Lexus here at the back. There's a TX500H Direct 4 badge that signifies all wheel drive. It's standard with all wheel drive when you go for this model. Front wheel drive is standard when you guys go for the TX350. You can see the turn signal is also LED along with the brake light, along with the reverse light. There's no visible exhaust tips. It's a hybrid, so it's kind of okay that Lexus is doing away with that. You have a rear window wiper here and a low profile spoiler. And then looking at the cargo area, the TX didn't give up much in terms of cargo space compared to the Highlander or the Grand Highlander. You have 20.2 cubic feet of storage space with the third row seat up. Uh, there is a little bit of underfloor storage over here. And then Lexus says there's a full size spare underneath the vehicle here. Uh, which I can't really see. It's underneath the floor here, uh, which is nice. The plug-in hybrid does not have the full size spare. It just has a fix a flat kit. Unlike the Grand Highlander, you can get features like this power folding third row. That's gonna be standard when you go for the premium trims and up. Now the third row in this vehicle only seats two across as opposed to three. The power folding feature is a nice touch. When you fold that down, it expands the cargo to 57 cubic feet of space. If you fold down the captain's chairs, Lexus says there's a total of 97 cubic feet, which again, that is pretty similar to the amount of storage space that you get in the Grand Highlander. And it's among the best in the segment, about 10 more cubic feet than most of its competitors. So now that we've talked about the exterior styling of the TX500H, we're gonna show you guys the interior. Before we get inside, here's the key fob for the vehicle. You can see this is the current Lexus Intelligent Access key, uh, where it has your usual buttons for lock, unlock, power liftgate, and the uh, panic function. It also has a remote start function where if you just tap this button three times and on the third try, you basically push and hold the lock button. The lights, as you can see, will flash and then you'll hear the engine and the car will turn on. This is how you activate the remote start from the fob. If you have access to the Lexus uh, Inform uh, smartphone, uh, on your smartphone, you can also use a digital key function where you can use your phone as a key. You can hear the car doesn't actually turn the engine on, but it turned on the fan. It's turning on the air conditioning, which is a great feature. I like how Lexus still includes that from your actual remote fob. Now you can see the door handles look like traditional door handles. Um, however, these are the digital latch system that you get on all the other newer Lexus products. So this doesn't actually 
physically move. However, you can actually open up this portion here to open the doors uh, in case the power goes out, but there's basically a little pressure pad on the back. You just push that, the mirrors will unfold, and that's what will unlock the door for you. Now, looking at the interior of this particular combo, which is the incognito exterior with the Birch two-tone F-Sport specific seats. This is also the F-Sport luxury package. So this includes the perforated real leather with the semi-aniline, which has the ultra suede material. It's a really beautiful looking seat. I love the way the F-Sport is embossed into the actual head restraints. I love how these are a little bit more aggressively bolstered. These are also heated and ventilated. They adjust in 12 different ways and you got a three person memory. No memory on the passenger side, but the cooled seat function works really well. It's got heated seats and it also has an F-Sport specific steering wheel. The door panel, as you can see, has this soft touch injection molded plastic material. Instead of wood trim, Lexus is going with kind of like actual leather on this upper portion, more leather here. This also has the 21 speaker or 22 speaker Mark Levinson stereo, which you can see is covered in leather there. It's got more leather stitching with the two-tone look. And then there's your digital latch door handles there, along with some hard touch plastic materials here and some additional storage, along with that F-Sport specific side sill and the Sport pedals that's included when you guys go for the F-Sport handling package. Now getting inside, you can feel the TX has a nice easy step in height because it has just under eight inches of ground clearance as I shut the door. The door has a really solid sounding thunk, which adds to that impression of quality. So you kind of expect a vehicle with a Lexus badge to kind of give you that. Now, as I get inside this vehicle, you can see the steering wheel has a power tilt and telescoping uh, arrangement. You have the sensor there to monitor the driver because of the Lexus safety system 3.0. You have paddles on the wheel to control that six speed auto. The wheel itself is F Sport specific with the badging, the nice leather, the perforated leather, which feels really good uh, and the horn. It sounds pretty much what I expect for a vehicle of this size. You also get a heads up display with this luxury trim and some piano black plastic. You can see the infotainment system in this car uh, shows some first for Lexus, especially when you look at the um let me turn the car on here. When you look at the instrument panel, this is actually a fully digital 12 inch display. It's the first Lexus model to get a fully digital display. You can actually change the way the display here looks by using this little button here on the steering wheel and then toggling between different views here for the instrument panel where you can show a traditional tachometer and speedometer. You can change what's inside the actual speedo and the tack to show different information. This is basically the same system that we see in a lot of other Toyota products. So it's great to see a Lexus finally with a fully digital display, which is nice. You can see this portion here has a soft touch injection molded plastic. This is also soft touch with more leather on this portion. I'm surprised to see there's not some wood. There's not more wood trim. Again, it's kind of echoing from the door panel onto the dashboard. There is some thematic ambient lighting in this car, which is included with the luxury package. But again, I'll have to wait until I get one back home to show you guys what that looks like. There's some aluminum trim here, some ultra suede on the dash, which is nice. There's also some nice padded leather. So I mean, the dashboard design compared to the Grand Highlander is very different. It is very Lexus like. Now the infotainment system. This is the standard 14 inch Lexus interface system. So this is essentially their newest infotainment system. The 14 inches is standard. So compared to the Grand Highlander that has a two inch smaller display at 12.3 inches, you have dual zone or triple zone automatic climate control. Your heated and cooled seat function is here in the actual screen where you have climate down in this portion. And then you have your Apple CarPlay over here. Uh, going back to the Lexus display there, you can see this will have uh, embedded GPS, although it's a cloud-based system, so it won't work if you don't have LTE service. But you can see the GPS display is perfectly acceptable. It's nothing super special or fancy like you find like, on some other luxury brands with Google Maps. But most of you will say to hell with that, and you'll just use the CarPlay function anyways. You'll use uh, Google Maps or Apple Maps, whatnot. You have an actual volume knob here. Your air vents are here. And then if I put the vehicle in reverse, you can see there's your full 360 top-down camera, which has good resolution and quality. I like the fact that Lexus has really been upgrading that. You can also kind of push this button down here where it will give you a full 360 perimeter scan. It's not particularly useful, but it's nice. It's a nice little party trick to show off to your guests. You can also see there's an automatic parallel parking function. There's three USB charging ports here, a total of seven in the actual vehicle itself. You can see your wireless phone charging pad is here, some storage here. And the beauty is, is you can push this forward. Your phone can actually stay there. There's a deeper storage area here with a 12 volt power outlet. And then you can see these cup holders are interesting where they actually are modular. You can take them out clean them off. You can also move them into the second row seat um, or you can just take them out entirely and have even more storage space. So Lexus was thinking again, road trips and family vehicles, which this is a little difficult to latch in when you are trying to hold a camera as well. Um, over here, you can see your drive mode selector, 
uh, a little bit at least. There's your stability control off, there's a trail mode in the all-wheel drive system. Your actual drive mode selector is gonna be found when you are back into the screen here. When you tap that button, you can see if you scroll over here, there's normal, eco, sport, and custom. You can also adjust a couple of settings. So Lexus did put some s adjustments in the screen, but once you get used to it, you really only touch it once to adjust a few things. You have an electronic parking brake here. Uh, and then if you look at the center console, I like the design of it. It's different than the Grand Highlander in the sense that imagine you've got your elbow here. You basically want to open this side here. The passenger can do that without disturbing the driver from uh, basically resting their elbow there. Or you can open it up all the way. You can see it's a pretty deep storage bin where it's lined with felt. Uh, it's really well finished. Uh, the seats, like I said earlier, are beautiful looking. I love this two-tone birch design. There's also a black interior and a peppercorn interior, which is a very, very dark brown. This is definitely my preference. Lexus does not currently offer their red interior on this car. I kind of hope they change that. It would be nice to see that, especially on the F Sport models. You can see the glove compartment here is damped and lined with felt. It's a pretty good bin style. You also have your digital camera review mirror that's included with the technology package that my tester has. The headliner here uh, doesn't, it has a woven material, but not an ultra suede material. Then you can see you can pair up the panoramic glass roof in here, which as you can see, when you open it up, it does let in some light. It's a very hot day today, but you can see you can also open this up over the two front seats as well. But overall, as you can see, the interior of the new TX certainly has a ton of features, a ton of space, a ton of luxury, and it definitely has a much higher quality feel. I mean, this is a very early pre-production car and there are no squeaks, no rattles. Everything's fit together and screwed together very tightly. But I think the, Lex the typical Lexus customer is gonna be pretty happy when they see the inside of the new TX. Now moving over into the back seat of the new TX500H. First of all, this model here, if you guys go for any of the hybrid versions, you're going to come standard with captain's chairs. So that limits the seating capacity to six because the third row only seats two across as opposed to three. If you want the bench seat, you have to step down to the gas only 350 and you have to be a luxury or a premium trim or below because the luxury, I believe, comes standard with the captain's chairs. The captain's chairs also include heat and ventilation, which is definitely nice. You don't typically find that in the segment. You can see back here on the rear door panels, this is a soft touch injection molded plastic. You have standard manual rear sunshades, which is definitely a nice touch. You have more leather here, leather here, padded over here, hard touch here, but there's some nice storage. You can see the window controls have that same high quality feel as the front. They are one touch for all four, which is nice. And then uh, these seats, they slide forward and back and they recline to give you again more space. Now getting back here, you can see once I'm back here, Lexus claims uh, there's around 39 and a half inches of legroom. Now, if I want to slide this seat forward and back, you can see this is the max that it slides back. I will say that some competitors do offer more legroom in the middle row, like maybe up to 40 inches of legroom. This is still pretty good. I mean, this seat back isn't where I'd have it to drive. It's further back than I'd want it to be at five foot seven, but you can see there's plenty of foot space. There's a little bit more of a, more of a flat floor here. The plug-in hybrid that I was just in had a little bit more of a raised area. You do have heated and ventilated seats, like I said, your own set of climate control, a little bit of storage here with two more USBs. You have two storage cubbies here. And then right here in the center console area, you can see these little cup holders. They basically pop out again, just like on the front, where you can kind of interchange that. Or you can also pull this out entirely and yank this out, which is great if you want to create a bigger pass-through area, which is nice. Uh, above me, you can see the panoramic roof does take up some of your headroom, but it's not bad for somebody my height. It lets in a lot of light which is a nice touch. I like how it goes over the actual second row uh, passenger seats, which is nice. Let me hop into the third row and show you guys the space because this is where the TX has a huge advantage, especially for those of you who are trading in your RXL. Now to get back into the third row, you can obviously remove that and go through the center, or you can also just push this button and hold it. Once you push that, you can see it kind of slides the seat forward, but you still have to kind of push it forward on its tracks out of the way. Uh, Lexus says that if you're trying to use a car seat, if you have a car seat here, you can basically pull on this lever here and the seat will slide forward where it'll give you access to that as well if you guys prefer that. Most people, however, are gonna use this little function here, which when you slide this forward, you can see the third row back here uh, only seats two across. And that's because Lexus said they wanted the third row back here to be more comfortable. Now, it is wide enough to accommodate a third seat here. However, Lexus took it out because they said that with a third row adult or with a, an adult back here in the third row, you're basically kind of hitting elbows and they wanted this to be more about comfort as opposed to, you know, squeezing in all that additional utility. Now, in terms of the space in the third row, Lexus claims there's 33 and a half inches of legroom back here, which 33 and a half for somebody my height, you can see I can get back here and my knees aren't touching the seat back. This is with it all the way back, of course. 
Um, there's good foot space underneath here. And in terms of features, Lexus did include a couple of things. You do have USB charging and you also have a power recline function for the third row. So that's of course exclusive to the TX. You don't get the power folding third row on something like the Grand Highlander. You do have a padded center or a padded armrest area here, some storage and a, another cup holder along with the USB and the ability to kind of recline the seat electrically, which is nice. In terms of the headroom space, you can see I can sit back and lean back and my head doesn't touch the ceiling, but if you're over six feet, you might be hitting your head on the ceiling. I like how there's rear seat air vents back here. That's something that the Acura MDX lacks is, rear, is third row air vents. The second passenger also has them on the roof as well. But overall, if you guys are looking for a luxury crossover that's not even like a hybrid or just a luxury crossover in general with three rows, that can actually fit full-size adults. The TX really is in a class of its own. This has way more space than its competitors. And I also like how the third row is even fitted with the same ultra suede and high quality semi-aniline leather. So Lexus isn't skimping. The one thing that is missing back here, however, are no heated third row seats. Lexus doesn't offer that at any price. So here we are in the first ever Lexus TX 500H. And I have to say the 500H is definitely the model to get if you guys really value the uh, extra acceleration that you get from the hybrid powertrain. Lexus claims this model should sprint to 60 in around 6.1 seconds. Let's go ahead and test it out and see what we can get in this actual little test here. We'll brake torque it in sport mode right now. It actually spins out the front tire slightly, but 6.5 seconds in our little brief test there. Now, keep in mind, I am driving the vehicle on a very short loop in Austin here. Uh, I'll retest one when I eventually get one back home, but 6.5 is slightly slower than the 6.1 that Lexus claims. I actually had a chance to drive the 550H Plus earlier today, and that model did it in around six point, uh, or six seconds flat with four people in the vehicle. So obviously the 500H is the middle engine option. It's basically one notch up from the 350. But in the real world, that six-ish seconds, zero to 60 times should be plenty fast for most people. In reality, what the Lexus TX500H has to offer compared to the other TX models uh, is the adaptive suspension. So this, this has the upgraded adaptive variable F-Sport specific tuned suspension, and we also have dynamic rear wheel steering. I mean, those are two features that you cannot even get on a Grand Highlander at any price. Lexus also has said that they've basically stiffened up the chassis. They've also strengthened, strengthened and lightened the car because the hood and the Fenders are made from aluminum on this vehicle. But what I'm noticing right off the bat is that Lexus signature driving feel that Lexus so boldly likes to tout up definitely is apparent here. You get a sense that this car drives a little bit nicer than a Grand Highlander. The suspension feels a lot more buttoned down. The Grand Highlander felt a little bit more wallowy. The steering feels a little bit tighter, a little bit heavier. Not much in terms of feedback, but I mean, this car is definitely not a sports sedan, but if you're gonna drive it, you know, back to back with something like an Acura MDX Type S, it feels like it can keep up pace with the MDX, which is a pretty sporty driving vehicle. We'll put our foot down here. You can feel, ooh, there's some understeer there. <laughs> but uh, the car, you know what? Actually, it's not bad. I mean, yes, there's some understeer because it's still a, you know, 5,000 pound SUV, but there's still something about this car that still feels more fun to drive than something like the Grand Highlander on which it's based. Now, comparing this car to other competitors like the Audi Q7, for example, the Volvo XC90, um, the Infiniti QX60, stuff like that. I mean, this car feels pretty much on the same, you know, level playing field as those vehicles. I find the brakes to feel really good. This model also has the upgraded 15.9 inch rotors with six piston calipers. They feel appropriate given the size of this vehicle. I also like the way these seats hug you in place a lot nicer. They just feel super comfortable. I love the fact that these seats are supportive, but they also feel very plush. And that's something that Lexus does really well are the seats. Now, this model here also has uh, a sound enhancer in the interior interior where it's kind of amplifying the sound from the 2.4 liter engine. Remember, this is the 2.4 liter turbo with two electric motors, including a separate E-axle at the back. That E-axle delivers like 107 horsepower on its own. It is paired up with a six-speed automatic transmission. Now, the six-speed auto is an interesting choice. It does give you these paddles where you can take control of the engine yourself, although it's only six gears. Put my foot down here. You you can feel the uh, engine has plenty of low end torque, but it also is really good because you've got that electric motor that's kind of filling in the gaps because a turbocharged engine will still always have a little bit of turbo lag from a stop. And this is where the electric motor kind of fills in those gaps. It makes the car feel like it doesn't have any turbo lag while the turbo is taking time to spool up. 
But around town, this is where the hybrid portion of this car also is really nice because the hybrid portion allows you to basically coast along in rush hour traffic to where you're not using any or the gas engine. It'll shut off the gas engine and run in hybrid only mode. You can also change the drive mode here and go into a an eco mode, which the eco mode is going to shut off the engine and it's going to favor more electric driving. Uh, and remember, however, this battery pack in this car is very small so that it really can't go on electric power alone except at absolute low speeds. Anytime I push the accelerator pedal a little bit too hard, it will wake up the internal combustion engine and you'll be hearing this, the sound enhancer of the engine that tries to make it sound like a V6. So you'll be feeling that electric motor torque. Um, but in this mode, the suspension also will, in eco mode that I'm in right now, the suspension also will soften a little bit. The steering gets a little bit lighter. Uh, and then just kind of driving the car normally. This is where the TX really shines because even though we've all, we're on these 22 inch wheels, uh, it has a very comfortable ride quality. The adaptive dampers are doing their job to soak up the bumps. I am hearing a little bit more road noise in this model versus the TX 550H Plus, the plug-in hybrid, which is a luxury trim. Wind noise is pretty hushed. Again, you don't really hear the engine much when you're in eco mode. This is how most TX owners are gonna drive. They're gonna drive this car at like a five tenths kind of scale. You'll just be cruising around town. You've got your kids in the back, you've got your spouse, you've got passengers and friends and all their other crap with them because this car is such a big vehicle and it definitely reminds you that it's a big vehicle. Now, it's not difficult to drive this car. The dynamic rear wheel steering in this car at higher speeds will turn the rear wheel in the same direction as the front. That adds in the stability when you're changing lanes and then at low speeds, it'll turn in opposite directions that shortens the turning radius of this car. Now, I won't be able to do uh, a fuel economy test on this very short first drive, um, basically, impression. I'll have one for a full week at a later point where I'll be able to do a more thorough fuel economy test. But overall, in terms of just driving the TX normally, does it feel noticeably nicer than a Grand Highlander? I mean, it's really kind of hard to say unless I'm driving the two back to back for sure, but at my initial impressions, I'm noticing that the suspension feels better sorted, better tuned. There's more sound insulation. It feels sportier to drive as well. And in terms of acceleration, the two cars still feel pretty dead even. But let's go ahead and hop into just the TX350 without the hybrid powertrain and see how just the base turbo engine performs. So after spending the day driving the brand new 2024 Lexus TX 500h F Sport Performance, I have to say, even though some of you are really quick to probably dismiss this car as more like a fancy Toyota Grand Highlander, I have to say this car here, Lexus does a really good job of differentiating their vehicles from the more plebeian Toyota counterparts. Specifically, however, the 500h with the F Sport handling package, because for those of you who are looking for a sportier driving, electrified three row luxury crossover, this is really in a class of its own and that's what makes the TX super unique as you guys mentioned or as you guys heard from the driving scene the suspension of this car and the chassis and the steering upgrades over a Grand Highlander are very noticeable especially when you start pushing this vehicle around some corners the adaptive dampers really do a good job with giving you an excellent ride quality and a slightly sportier feel the 22 inch wheels look good but they also don't affect the ride quality and the dynamic rear wheel steering does a good job in making this big vehicle drive a little bit more like a smaller vehicle remember those are all all features that I mentioned are not available on a Grand Highlander. Now, in terms of the exterior design, that's always a subjective thing here. However, I really like the way the TX looks when you have it in the right colors and in the right specs. The F Sport handling package, as you can see, gives it a very unique look with a really attractive looking wheel. Uh, this color is called Incognito. It's exclusive to the F Sport handling model. And I'm hoping at some point when Lexus uh, ramps up production of this vehicle, because remember, this is built in Indiana. It's the first US assembled Lexus. Uh, I'm hoping that they'll eventually add more colors like a bright blue, the ultrasonic blue, or a nori green pearl. I'm sure that Lexus will eventually add that as we go on into the later model years. And I'm, far, I'm sorry that I didn't get a chance to drive the TX350. I'm hoping that Lexus will send me one of those when I get one back home t uh, for a full week to test out. But uh, as you guys saw, zero to 60, the first time we got it was six and a half seconds. Off camera, I actually did a second run and I got 6.2 seconds. That's bang on with what Lexus is, estimates the vehicle will do. I want you also to remind you guys that this model here is a very early pre-production car and it's about 97 degrees out here. It doesn't feel like fall at all here in Texas. It actually feels like we're in the middle of summer. Uh, but really when it comes to gripes, it's gonna probably come down to uh, the pricing of this vehicle because the TX does start at around $55,000, which I think that's actually 
actually a reasonable starting price. It starts basically where a Grand Highlander is going to end. That sounds about right considering this is a Lexus. It comes with more standard equipment and it comes with the Lexus dealer network. Now that's for a base 350. That's including the destination charge at 55,050. Add 1600 if you want all wheel drive. Most of you will probably want to go to the premium package for an extra $3,500. That's going to include the heated and cooled seats, a couple of other nice upgrades. And it also opens up the option box for that Pano sunroof and a few other uh, upgrades like the captain's chairs. The luxury trim is around $62,000, another $2,500 on top of that. If you guys want this model here, the 500H, it'll cost you at least $69,000. Now, 69 grand is basically the same price as something like an Acura MDX Type S. I view that as the direct rival to this vehicle. However, the Acura has less power and it also uses more fuel. Theoretically, it's supposed to be a sportier driving vehicle, but the Lexus can, I have to say, keep up with a lot of those sportier driving SUVs. I'd have to drive the Acura back to back to really see which one is actually the sportier model. This model here with the luxury package plus the F Sport handling package is around $72,000. Add in the options like the technology package, the convenience package, the Mark Levinson stereo, um, and this one here with destination comes in to around $75,000, a little over 75 grand, which I know 75 grand is a lot of money for something like this, but I have to say that if you're looking at the competition, the MDX Type S is around the same price. You can easily get an Audi Q7 to be well over $80,000, same with the Volvo. So it's basically, basically priced in the realm that Lexus needs to be. And I expect for those of you who have basically wanted something to upgrade from, from your RX, you want basically the biggest luxury SUV that you can buy from Lexus. This should quickly make it to your shopping list. And I do think that Lexus has done a lot here to differentiate it from its Toyota counterparts. And it's a really nice addition, a car that Lexus dealers have been needing for quite some time. Uh, so it's great to see that Lexus really building something for American buyers. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2024 Lexus TX 500H. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.